Now, here's a very interesting story coming to us from Germany. It's become the first country in Europe to allow babies with characteristics of both sexes to be registered as neither male nor female. From today, parents will be allowed to leave the gender blank on birth certificates, and the move is aimed at taking away some of the pressure that parents feel to make quick decisions on the sex of their babies, including whether they might need surgery to determine their gender. Now, it's thought that up to one in every 2,000 people have characteristics of both sexes. They're known as intersex because they have a mixture of male and female chromosomes. German passports, which currently list the holder's sex as male or female, will soon have a third designation, X, for intersex. Well, with me in the studio is Sarah Graham. She defines herself as an intersex woman. She's also a counsellor who works with people with gender issues. Sarah, thank you so much for coming in. Um, I want to just sort of cut to the quick. What was it like growing up for you? Well, I was one of a generation of people that were completely lied to by the med medical establishment. I first came into gynaecology when I was seven, and my parents and I were both given a story about what my diagnosis was that wasn't actually correct. And when I was seven years old, I was operated on, and I had my ovaries removed, or that was the story, and, um, and then went on hormone replacement. I had to see a lot of doctors. I saw, saw Sir John Professor Dewhurst every six months. I had an army of medical students examine me. It was a very traumatic process. And then I discovered in my 20s that actually we'd all been lied to, including my parents, and that actually I'm an intersex woman, uh, and they'd covered that up. But how did you arrive at that conclusion? Finally, I had a gynaecologist who was willing to be honest, who broke the silence and, and didn't agree with um, the medical establishment lying to intersex people and actually said, no, this isn't true. I'm going to let you look at your notes and you have a condition called androgen insensitivity syndrome and you're actually an intersex person. You have XY chromosomes. There's a whole range of conditions, though. Mine is just one and anybody who's interested really needs to Google this because some people have, mi have um, chromosomes that are different. Some people have, you know, all sorts... I mean, there's many, many varieties and I can't sum it up in this... A little segment here. Sure, but w when you got that discovery, how did that change your outlook? What did it do for you? For me, and for many intersex people, it was completely shocking and traumatic because there's absolutely no visibility for intersex people in the world. Most people out there probably don't even know that intersex people exist. We've been erased by the medical and legal establishment around the world, and babies are still being operated on routinely. Often these operations are not necessary for the child's development. Sometimes they take away fertility and sexual responsiveness, but they're done to make culture feel better. They're done to reinforce these boxes of male and female. Well, that's not the actual truth. Nature loves diversity, a whole range of different possibilities of gender and sexual characteristics. Men, you know, I'm a therapist, and mm. when I work with men and women, one of the things we have to do is strip away these beliefs, because a lot of it is just fantasy that we all live by. So this move by the German government to allow, you know, the box to be left blank on birth certificates, do you welcome that? Absolutely. When I saw it this morning, I tweeted from at Addiction Expert how pleased I am that Germany is being progressive and stepping forward. You know, this has a massive implication for, for um, cultures and societies and for the state because the whole system is based on those two boxes. The whole internet is based on those two boxes. So there are massive costs potentially uh, for changing that and recognising that intersex people exist. But I think it's good for all of us because because those two boxes constrain us all into these little things of what a man should be or what a woman mm. should be. And actually, we're, we're who we are. We're individuals. But for the kids who, who grow up with a birth certificate with nothing on it, I mean, they're going to have a lot of issues later in life, aren't well, they, as a result of that, aren't that's they? That's a problem. And I think Germany is... They've, they've done a good thing, but we need to go further. We actually need to have a new classification for those people who want to define themselves as intersex. Many people, myself included, are happy with a gender. I'm definitely a woman. I identify as a woman. But that's not the whole story. I'm also intersex too. And it would be nice in, the, in, a, in an appropriate circumstance to have a box where you can choose to come out and be proud of, are of you being an intersex person. imagining kids in the playground would run around saying, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, I'm intersex? Yeah, why not? Lots of children express... they get bullied. I know, but that's because we, we, that shows what we need to do. We've got a massive job here to educate humans, to say, actually, it's OK. Lots of parents know that their child may not want to fit into the binary boxes. Lots of little boys want to play with dolls and lots of girls want to, you know, do action things. These boxes are a fantasy. If we created a third space for intersex people, it might take the pressure off everybody. You know, this pink and blue thing is a nonsense. It's, it's a hegemony that we need to challenge. We all need to be free. The human heart is the most important organ not what goes on down there.
Uh, I know there's a lot of people watching this that would disagree with you, but Australia has already done this. I think they were the first country to offer that uh, third option. Germany is now doing it. Do you think other countries are going to follow, or do you think these are just a couple of cases? I think that everybody around the world needs to look at this issue because this is a medical reality, this is a biological reality. Intersex people exist. We need to stop erasing them. You know, there are a handful of people in the whole world who are out and proud of being intersex because it's really difficult. I've done a lot of therapy on myself. I've done a lot of training as a therapist. I still struggle with being an intersex person. You know, things like being infertile, that's a painful thing. I still have anger that comes up that I need to work on. You know, we need to support intersex people. but. We also need to know that, like the Native American tribes used to know, intersex people have special gifts. You know, because we don't fit in those tiny boxes, we can see the world in a different way. And we have things that we can contribute to society if it's safe for us to speak up and to be who we are. Sarah Graham, I think it's been absolutely fascinating talking to you. I know there's a lot of issues hanging off this subject, but thank you very much for coming in and sharing your experiences with us. Thank you.